with hairstyling, there's so many different things. It could, it could be cutting, it could be coloring, it could be styling. I think for us is to really find what you love the most and really focus that on your Instagram. So you're attracting the clientele that you want and being consistent. Hi, I'm Adrian M. White, and with over a decade of entrepreneurship experience and launching four successful businesses, I know what it takes to grow your business online and live a more purpose-filled life doing the work that you most enjoy. Branding Invert is your go-to resource for branding, marketing, and entrepreneurship advice for service-based business owners looking to scale their business to six figures a year. This is the Brand and Convert with Adrian M. White podcast. Hello, and welcome to Brand and Convert with Adrian M. White podcast. This is Adrian, and we are here today for another Entrepreneur Spotlight. Today, I have the pleasure of bringing on Debbie Salvino. Debbie is a salon owner, educator, and mentor, and she is owner of Domain the Salon in Timonium, Maryland. I'm really excited to share her journey with you guys today. So here's Debbie. Debbie, welcome. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. So Debbie and I have known each other now for a a few years, like three or four years. And um, she's really special to me because she was actually one of my first (laughs) clients when I went full time with my business. I think it was back in like in 2019. Yeah, I think it was like 2018, 2019, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So I really appreciate that you have just been a supporter, you know, from basically the beginning of me really ramping things up. Well, and it's been really fun watching you grow and grow in your business, you know, alongside as I'm growing my business. So it's been great to watch. (laughs) Awesome. Debbie has like over 38,000 Instagram followers. (laughs) Her business is booming. She like opens her schedule for clients and it like gets booked up in like a matter of probably hours or something. (laughs) So tell us how you like got started, like all the way back to the beginning. How did you get started in the hair industry? I went to a high school, it was the arts and tech school that offered a cosmetology program. And kind of right away, I knew I wanted to do hair. At 16, I got started in a salon and I worked there for 18 years. Just really built up, yeah, really built up my book. I just always took every bit of education that I could anything that was offered to me, I just, you know, kind of took and ran with it. And I started mentoring other hairstylists during that time, and then decided I needed to kind of grow and make some changes. And that's when I kind of stepped out on my own and started doing independent education for other hairstylists. I decided I just wanted to kind of help new stylists that were just starting out. I was working a lot, but I love every bit of doing hair. I love every bit of teaching. So yeah, that's just kind of where I've taken my career thus far and now just growing into, you know, just continuing to grow. Did you have any challenges of kind of getting people who are interested in your salon education when you first like started getting into that aspect of your business? When I started doing that, it wasn't as like right now, there's just our industry is booming with independent educators because of social media. Um, When I started, it was very, I would say local, like very like word of mouth, you know, people that I had mentored were excited that I was like starting to offer classes. And so they were telling their friends. So it kind of started on like a local aspect. And then, you know, with social media was able to grow it. I would say, you know, it is a little difficult because you really have to put your name out there. And you really have to be vulnerable and people want to get their money's worth. They want to know like what you have to offer, how you're going to help them. You know, the first couple, I feel like in the beginning, it was a little shaky, just trying to figure out how to include everything that everybody wants into a class. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with feedback and just like working on some things, like it got easier. When did you branch out and like kind of do your own thing or get your own salon? So actually when COVID hit, so I had went from working at a corporate salon for 18 years. I've always known that I wanted to have my own salon. So I had started looking and, you know, timing just wasn't right. I believe in timing is everything and it just, the pieces weren't falling together. So I decided to experience a private salon because I had been working in a corporate salon for so long. 
I started at a private salon the whole time, kind of just knowing that this was just a stepping stone. And then when COVID hit, you know, we were just kind of, we were stuck at home. We couldn't work. And that gave me a lot of time to really think about what I wanted and how to go about it. I decided that a salon suite would be a good stepping stone from a private salon to owning my own business because Mm -hmm. it was just such a small scale. And with not being able to have so many clients in at the same time, uh, I was so used to having like two, three clients at a time where now I'm only able to see one client. And so being in a salon suite really gave comfort to the clients because it was just such a time of like where people didn't want to be around a lot of other people, just more comfortable. Um, So being in the salon suite was really good because it gave me an opportunity to really just start my own business on a small scale Mm -hmm. and slowly start to grow and not just dive into something big and be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And like I said, during a time where things were just so shaky in our industry, it was just really good. When we first started working together, you were already like really, really focused on what is it? Balayage? How do you how do you pronounce it? So, like balayage lived in color is mm-hmm. what I like to call it. People use the term balayage for a look when it's actually more of a technique. But okay. uh, lived in color, which basically is just everyday wearable color. You know, as it grows out, it still looks great. Low maintenance, just beautiful hair. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think that was awesome. And obviously you do it beautifully, (laughs) which is why you've become (laughs) successful. One of the things that I often advise my clients is that they should be really focused on like a specialty like that, like be the expert of that instead of being like a generalist at like a whole bunch of things. How did you even determine that you were going to focus in on that? Did you, did you have someone mentor you to tell you that that should probably be the direction you go in with your business? I always loved color. I mean, from day one, I just would color anybody. I would do any color. But I think my obsession with lived in color was just, it started when I started seeing my clients coming back after, you know, eight weeks and their hair still looked great. And so from there, I was like, you can go three or four months, your hair still looks good. Like for me, it's all about my client always looking good, especially, you know, when COVID hit, like I was actually okay knowing that I couldn't see them for months because their hair would still look good. And I think that's important for the client too, that even, you know, three months into their hair appointment, they know that it doesn't look awful. So Mm -hmm. that's what really became my obsession with lived in color was just like perfecting it for each client and customizing it so that they really get longevity. Nice. Did you have to kind of like educate people initially when you first started getting into doing that technique on what it even was so that they decided that they wanted it? (laughs) Oh, yeah, for sure. Because I feel as though here on the East Coast, we're a little bit behind on some of the trends and like hair, you know, color styles. So when we started doing it, people were like, oh, this is just, you know, I'm not used to going so long in between hair appointments, but they like really learned to love it. And, you know, you definitely always have clients that will give you a little pushback because they're just so comfortable in their normal look. But (laughs) once, you know, you get them used to it, you know, now everybody loves it. (laughs) How did you grow your Instagram to like over 30K? (laughs) I will say there was a time where I, I, I really did spend a lot of time on it, you know, posting two, three times a day. Just I think what's key is consistency in, mm-hmm. in posting and in your, you know, what your message is, and then just attracting those people that are like minded like you. So for me, you know, a lot of it is um, trying to reach out to other hairstylists and, you know, teaching, but also just beautiful hair. And I think even people that aren't hairstylists are just obsessed with hair transformations. People just love to see good before and after, or mm-hmm. even just like learning, you know, tips and techniques. So I think for me, it was mostly consistency. But you know, Instagram is, is such a funny thing like that. It's always changing. Say like, I have struggles with it too. So <laughs> what type of struggles do you have with it? Well, you know, it's always changing. So before, you know, I think when I was really growing, I was just, you know, posting like a beautiful picture, but now Mm -hmm. they want you to create a whole video and a reel. And, you know, so what went from, you know, maybe spending 15 minutes on a post, I'm spending an hour Mm. and don't always have an hour every day to, you know, dedicate to making a video for Instagram. Right. Right. 
So, you know, it's always changing. I hope they like bring back just like pictures. I hope that pictures will be <laughs> a thing. I mean, I still post pictures. So like I said, I try to stay consistent, but you know, the videos are just so time consuming. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Do you plan like your content in advance or, you know, how do you manage posting so frequently? So I try to, I will try to each week, just get what I can get in the you know salon try to dedicate a few hours a week to putting together videos and posts. And, you know, the tools on the app are great because it will, you know, tell you like the best days to post, the best time. So I try to stick to that. So I will make a post or a reel and I'll save it. And then I'll just set my alarm like, okay, time to post, you know, Monday 8 p.m. So I do try to do that. But there are, you know, there's weeks where it's just insanely busy and I don't have the time in the salon to really get footage, which I think there's nothing wrong with diving into the archives and reposting some good ones. So those will be like the times that I'll do that. When you're taking your footage, are you just using a phone or do you have like a professional camera? Oh, I just use my phone. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. Kudos what type to, of phone do you have? iPhone? I just an iPhone. I okay. mean, kudos to the people that have like, I, I bought a professional camera about three, four years ago. And I think I've brought it out three times. Oh um, yeah. So, you know, stick to the phone, keep it easy, keep it simple. I think that's important. Yeah. I mean, smartphones are like, the camera has gotten so good like oh. lately. I've done my entire YouTube channel, like recording on my phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the quality absolutely. is pretty good. <laughs> absolutely. And I'm not super tech savvy. So all of my, you know, editing and the videos that I make, it's all for my phone. I like to keep things as easy as possible. <laughs> good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think most of us do as well. Yes. <laughs> so for your um your story, so I've yes. used your stories and your like highlights as like examples all the time of like what oh. other people should be doing because it's so branded and like themed. And I feel like it's almost like an extension of your website. Oh, what... I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> what um what tools do you use to design? the posts Honestly, that you're doing in your stories because they definitely um, are like very branded and really Canva nice. Pro. Canva Pro. Can yeah. yeah. Canva Pro has been my go-to. I had a couple other apps like I had used a few years ago, but Canva Pro is the last two years mm -hmm. has been mainly what I've been using. And for some of like the videos that I'll post on stories, I use Templi is another app that is um, pretty easy to use. Okay. But those, those are the two. And Canva is great because you can set up your brand kit with your colors, your fonts, and it, it does make it easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love Canva Pro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Awesome. So good. Do you have any marketing tips you can give other hairstylists that are really trying to grow their brand, grow their following on Instagram, what they should be, you know, some, some things that they could integrate into their marketing plan? Yeah. I mean, I definitely think like you had touched on earlier, just finding your, like your niche, like what you are the most passionate about. And I think in with hairstyling, there's so many different things. It could, it could be cutting, it could be coloring, it could be styling. I think for us is to really find what you love the most and really focus that on your Instagram. So you're attracting the clientele that you want and being consistent and showing this color, being consistent and showing the color that you do, you know, daily, weekly basis. And definitely engaging with like potential clients, your community, even like other hairstylists. I mean, those would be like the top two. I mean, I think consistency is always the most important. Yeah, definitely showcasing what you love doing. Okay, cool. Yeah. What are your thoughts on doing different things to diversify your income? Because I've seen, you know, yeah. obviously you have, you do hair. And then you have the education piece. And I think I saw like an online course or something going on too. Yeah. So I just started that some online classes just because traveling, you know, it gets tough. I have a family <laughs> and, you know, I can't be away every weekend in different cities easily. So, and that came out of people asking like, you know, do you do online classes? Like, is that available? And it was just like, you know, why not? Let's do it. So that was a great way to just get, you know, some passive income, obviously retail. I'm definitely very passionate about. 
I'm sure you're enjoying this episode, but I wanted to quickly pop in to let you know about how you can grow your service-based business to six figures a year today by learning how to better market it online. Join my exclusive membership community, Marketing Maintenance, for as little as $49 a month and learn how to develop and implement effective online marketing strategies that bring in more leads while also keeping your WordPress website protected and up to date. This program includes website updates, site maintenance, monthly marketing trainings, one-on-one marketing strategy meetings, and marketing deliverable creation. Join today at marketingandmaintenance.com. I'm definitely very passionate about a good home regimen. I make sure that the companies that I work with offer links where like my clients can buy online as mm-hmm. well as like in my salon. So that's always great. Working with different brands, I do do that as well. Just reviewing products, posting about it. Yeah. Another, yeah, another great way to make a little, you know, make some passive income. <laughs> yeah. Do people, do they reach out to you to ask you to review or do you find them? Uh, no, typically they reach out, mm-hmm. which has been great. I have worked with a couple companies, just like some ambassador programs, um, color lines, product lines, tools. So, I mean, there's just a lot of opportunity out there. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of, you know, I think, like I said, being consistent on social media is key because that's typically how I get found Okay. for those opportunities. Mm -hmm. Are you using like hashtags too, or did you ever include hashtags in your strategy? Oh, yeah. Always use hashtags, especially for product lines that I use. You always, you know, tag the companies use their hashtags. That'll definitely get you noticed. So let's talk about what's going on with your business now and okay. your partnership with, it sounds like a business partner and a friend. Uh-oh. Oh, okay, yes. So um, <laughs> how did that come about? How did you guys end up like start working? How did you guys meet? So, and then how did you guys start working together? Okay. So yes. Yeah, so my sweet partner, we share a suite right now, Sarah. Um, we have known each other since I was like 19. So like 20, almost like 22 years. So we worked together um, at our first salon. Okay. And then a few years back, we started teaching together. So we came up with two main babes and we started traveling and teaching. And then we got our suite together and then we decided to do the online education. So it's actually been really fun to have a business with somebody that you can kind of bounce ideas off of. And, you mm-hmm. know, when you're teaching in front of a big group, it's nice to not have the spotlight completely on you <laughs> and to like, you know, work alongside somebody that can kind of, you know, take on a little bit of yeah. the work. <laughs> do you guys talk about the same topics or do you have specific topics that you guys each So specialize? when we teach, we try to teach two different looks. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, if I'm doing a lived in brunette, she might do like a blonde balayage. So we're, you know, definitely demonstrating two totally different looks, but the core of the education is pretty similar. Very yeah. cool. And so, now you're on your path to open yes. domain the salon. Yes. Tell so, me what that journey has been like for you. So this is my third time trying to open up a standalone salon and it just finally all the cards all together. I signed my lease a few months ago. We just started a demo this week, Man. hoping, yeah, it's going to be full demo. So a lot of work has already gone into it. A lot more work needs to go into it. Um, but we're hoping that it'll be ready by spring next year, if not okay. earlier. So okay. fingers crossed earlier, but it's been a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what What's different about this time versus the first two times when you were trying to go through that process to open your So I think the first time was, I knew I was ready to leave the corporate salon. And I think I was, I just wasn't confident yet. I was in a place where I wasn't sure if that's exactly what I wanted to do, but I felt like I had to do it because I wasn't happy in the situation that I was in. And then I realized, well, that's not a good reason to get into something, you know, (laughs) So so all that responsibility. And every time I would look, you know, look at a place, it just never like felt right. So that's when I decided to go to the private salon. And then the second time was actually before COVID hit, I was looking. And obviously, when COVID came, that definitely kind of 
shut that down. And then that's why I decided to go to the studio because I felt like that was just a safer bet and, you know, a better decision for at that moment. Mm -hmm. So this time it was just, you know, everything just fell into place. (laughs) (laughs) And not exactly what the look and feel, but like, so is, is it just you going to be in there? Are you going to have other stylists that rent booths or how's that? Yeah. So I'm working on a blended model. And so what that is, typically if you go to a hair salon, the stylist there will either be booth renters or commission-based. I would like a model that's actually blended where I can offer, you know, experienced stylists that want to run their own business, the opportunity to have their own workspace in the salon, Mm -hmm. and then also have commission-based stylists that would be working under me and I can help them grow their business if they eventually want to be independent or if they don't want the responsibility of, you know, owning their own business. They can always work under me. But even though having those two models in one place, I still want, you know, cultivate like a team environment where people can really feed off each other, motivate each other, and just offer things that you don't typically see offered in a salon, you know, coaching, helping everybody with their business, marketing, and lots of education. Love it. Yeah. So so that's the goal. Thanks. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's going to be a really big, accom- I mean, it already is a big accomplishment. Um, opening yeah. it, And I'm excited to, I have to come and visit and see it. Yes, in yes. And we'll have to work on our rebranding. <laughs> yes. We will work on that too. <laughs> It'll be yes. all, all a part of it. Maybe I'm, I'll go there for the photo shoot and we can get it. Yes, 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 yes. Definitely. We'll be having lots of those. Yes. I love it. Okay. So I have two questions. Um, One of the questions is, so one of the things that I noticed about your pictures that you had on your Instagram, even before, I guess when we were working together, so Mm pre-pandemic, is that they seem like they had a backdrop. Some of the women that were in the pictures looked like professional models or something. So what do you do there? How do you make your pictures look so professional and like just very refined. So some of the pictures some we do, we have done styled shoots in the past. So you might be seeing some of those in there kind of mixed in. I did used to use like a white backdrop just to keep everything very streamlined, Mm -hmm. but moving from salons, it's just different space, different lighting where I went from a place that had a lot of windows to a place where I have no windows. So (laughs) I try to keep it consistent in the sense to make it about the hair. Uh And I think the best thing to do is just try to make your model feel comfortable in front of the camera, which can be difficult. (laughs) And you definitely have, you know, I definitely have clients who, who love being in front of the camera and those that don't. So, you know, you might see a lot of the same girls (laughs) on my page because those are the ones that like to model. Um, and they're, yeah. are they customers of yours or clients? Of yeah. Yours? Yeah. So they're all clients, but they know, you know, they enjoy having their photo taken. So they'll come with their makeup ready. They'll come with a cute outfit. Um, mm-hmm. Or, you know, if I'm doing a new client and we're doing like a big transformation, I'll let them know like, Hey, like, you know, I would love to get footage of this. If you don't mind, you know, if you don't mind. And that usually like gets them ready. So, okay. <laughs> and gets them more excited. Yeah. (laughs) Nice. Have you ever had any like assistance with someone taking like the photos and videos? Because some of the videos you're like actually in them. Yeah. So a lot of the times where you see me actually working, I do have an assistant and an apprentice that work with me on a daily basis. So I have them do a lot of that videoing for me. And then I just put it together at the end. Nice. Yeah. And the, the assistant is like doing a whole bunch of different things for you, including the. Oh, they're the very. Ha- oh, yeah. They're very hands on. They're holding okay. foil. They're styling hair. They're shampooing. Okay. Cleaning. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So like catch y'all. <laughs> all <right>. Yes. <laughs> awesome. They're doing it all. All right. So I know we talked about like a lot of different things about your journey and it seems like you've had just a really positive, really kind of upward mobility type of journey. Did you face any like really big struggles, you know, in your path to growing your business? I hate to say this, but no, (laughs) I I mean, I've always been, people will say like, you never look stressed and it's not to say that I'm not ever stressed, but I like to face things head on and right away. So I know people have asked me that question before. I feel like if anything ever comes up, that's a struggle. I just work harder. (laughs) That's good. That's good. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you know, 
What about any like lessons learned, especially for people in similar industries as you? Oh, lessons learned. Definitely like don't you... be afraid to take chances. Yeah. I think in this industry, people get really comfortable and they're afraid to, you know, try different things to maybe go out on their own or say no to things. You know, I think as stylists, we're such people pleasers. And so saying no is never really, I don't know what you want to say. <laughs> we just don't like to, we don't like to disappoint. So I think, and it causes burnout. So a lot of people that I talk to tend to burn out very easily in this industry. So I think one thing that I probably would have done earlier is say no a little bit more, take more time off and not be afraid to jump out on my own. I think I, I feel like I waited too long mm. to do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why did you, think, why did you wait too long? I, just like I said, like I was comfortable, you mm -hmm. know, I was in a place where, you know, I had been there a really long time. I had a pretty decent schedule. And even though people kept telling me you could be doing so much more and taking your career to the next level if you just leave and go out on your own, I was too scared. That's, yeah, my one regret is I wish I would have done it earlier. Thank you for your transparency with that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we are wrapping up. Unfortunately, okay. time is coming to a close. But do you have any final words of advice on specifically to people that are in your similar industry? on things that yeah. they can do to get the following that they're looking to get and really grow their business, take it to the next level. I think education is key. There's so much education out there now. Education, I think a business coach, definitely, if you're looking to elevate your career to the next level, is getting a mentor, getting a coach. I think that I've done that recently and I think it has really helped me. But yeah, never get comfortable, never feel, you know, never get stagnant and always keep learning. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. We share how people can, you know, get connected to you, follow you, potentially hire you. <laughs> <laughs> Give all your um, yes. So my uh, Instagram is styled by underscore Debbie or domain underscore the salon. And then my website is www.debbiesalvino.com. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you again for thank you for having me yeah, coming here and sharing your story. I hope that it well, not I hope I know it's going to be very inspiring for Good. a lot of people out there. So awesome. Until next time. All see right. you later. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. You made it to the end. We have more amazing episodes coming up just like this one on the Brand and Convert with Adrian and White podcast. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at brandwithamw and learn more about working with me at brandwithamw.com. People always ask me how I scaled my business to six figures per year and now work full-time in my purpose. After a decade of being an entrepreneur and launching four successful businesses, I know what it takes to get your service-based business to six figures per year quickly. Start booking higher paying clients, automating your processes, and clarifying your messaging in my free training, five strategies my clients are using to develop brands, websites, and processes that grow six-figure businesses. Secure your seat today at training.brandwithamw.com. See you there.